Hello everybody in Facebook land. Hello, hello, hello. I'm going to give y'all just a couple of minutes, seconds to come on if you're coming. And if you're not, well, it will be posted on my Facebook page as well, so you won't miss out on anything. You might not be able to hear me because I've got this music playing quite loud, just as an interlude until we get started. I'm just going to give it a few more seconds, and then we're going to get started on our um, topic, continuing with the subject of uh, purpose. Um, I hope you enjoy today's lesson and that you get something out of it um, in a real way. Amen. So we're going to get started here. Uh, let's see. and get started. My name is Danette Hutchinson. It is a great day at a woman's place and I am so excited to be with you tonight to, to go live. Finally, I don't think I've done a live um, in this capacity in the evening. I know your time is very important so I promise I will not take up too much of it but I'm excited to share today's uh, message on purpose. Now, if you saw the post on my Facebook page, I asked a couple of questions. One of them is, when you hear the word stripper, what comes to your mind? What is the first thing that comes to your mind? And the second question is, can God use a stripper? Now, there's a reason why I used that particular terminology and let me start by saying it was not to throw shade or to embarrass or to demean or to discount anybody's lifestyle. This is, was strictly about something I was watching on Home and Garden TV. But what happened as I was watching this um, DIY show this thought came to me concerning one of the products that they were using and how that when we hear um, certain words or we hear certain phrases, things can come to our mind. We can, we can process what we're hearing in so many different ways, right? When you hear the word stripper, what do you think? When you hear the word stripper, what comes to your mind? Now, it depends really on where you're at, how you're going to assimilate that information about a stripper. I mean, if you've gone to strip clubs before, you're going to think differently about a stripper than somebody that has not ever gone to a strip club and yet is in a, a different lifestyle. They might think of a stripper in a different light than you would. So my question really tonight is, how do you receive the information about somebody else's purpose? How do you receive that information? When you hear somebody else's purpose or you, somebody shares with you what their purpose is, are you able to grab it? Are you able to embrace it? Are you able to say, yeah, I see that in you. I see that you, you have those characteristics. I see that you have those capabilities. I can see the potential in you in that arena. You've got the, we talked about gifts and talents before and how the gifts and talents really, um, for the most part, don't dictate a purpose right? Because purpose is so far beyond a gift and a talent, but there will be some abilities that are present in you when you're talking about purpose. There will be some abilities that other people can see if they have an eye to see the things that are naturally God given and God deposited on the inside of you. So let me explain the stripper bit and then we'll get down to the text that we're going to use today. 
So I was watching Home and Garden TV. One of my favorite channels. I only have a few. That is one of them. I think I have maybe five that I watch out of all the plethora of channels that cyberspace offers. I think there's five that I actually watch on a regular basis. So I was watching Home and Garden TV. I was watching a, actually it was YouTube, but she's a DIYer and um, her name is Alexander Gardner, I think is her last name. She's a young lady. She does small space DIYs. And so on this particular project they were doing was actually not such a small space because it was the home that she grew up in and her parents were returning from out of, uh, out of state and coming back to the home that they had their family with. And so she was redoing their home as a gift to them as they were coming back to be, um, uh, to be reoriented to their, uh, original place where they were living. And one of the things they were DIYing was a door. The front door had been weather worn. It was weather torn. And so she wanted to redo the front door and give it some pizzazz, give it some sparkle, you know, give it something that would make it stand out as a welcoming entrance into this, um, front door hallway that she was working on. So her and her team took the door outside and as they laid it down, they had this can of a product that they were going to use to remove old paint. And the product was called stripper. It was a stripper. It was a paint stripper. And so what they did was they did all the things that the can, you know, the instructions um, suggested and recommended for their own safety and for the best use of the product. And so as they were applying this stripper to this door and then laying a plastic cover on it to cure for a time, they removed the plastic cover was like a basic one of those big leaf garbage bags and so they removed it off of there and they began to they were you know wanting to see if this stripper was going to work the way it was designed to work and so they took their little spatulas and started scraping and sure enough just as the instructions um gave just as the instructions gave them just as the product said it would do it began to do exactly what it was designed to do so they're scraping all of this paint off it's coming off smooth and easy and they're all excited and as they're doing this i'm thinking to myself what do people think about when they hear the word stripper what is the first thing that comes to mind when they hear that word stripper? And then I began to think, you know, how many times do we misunderstand something simply because we don't have the proper information? How many times do we misunderstand our own purpose because we don't have the proper information. How many times do other people misunderstand our own, our purpose because they don't have the whole story, right? And so that's what we're gonna talk about just for a few minutes. I don't wanna take up a whole lot of your time, but I do wanna share this. Hopefully it will deposit in your spirit and cause you to rise up on the inside and say, hey, whatever it is, that I am here to do to the glory and honor of God. I can do this. Let's go to Acts. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter seven. I'm going to start at verse 23. I'm going to read this in three different versions. I'm going to read it in the King James version, the new international version and the message translation. So here we go. King James is first. It says, and when he was full 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. So we're talking about Moses in this set of scriptures. I'm only giving you a small context 
a small text. I'm not giving you the full context, but I will lay this foundation. It's talking about Moses, and it's talking about how that, um, well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to explain a little bit more about this whole scenario about Moses concerning his purpose and how his purpose was misunderstood because they had a wonky idea of who Moses was because of his upbringing. Okay. So now King James Acts 7, 23 through 25, with those thoughts in mind, listen to this. And when he was full 40 years old, it came into his heart, meaning Moses, to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. So he's saying, I have some um, heredity with y'all. <laughs> we, we got the same blood flowing through our veins, right? His brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptian. For he supposed, listen now, this is what Moses is going through. Moses supposed his brethren would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them, but they understood not. Moses assumed that they would understand his purpose. He assumed that they would understand why he was where he was, but they didn't understand it. And I, I, it, it suffice it to say, there are times in our lives that wherever we are, there are those who are not going to understand they're not going to understand our motives. They're not going to understand our purpose. They're not going to understand our intentions. And yet and still, we could very well be, I can't speak for you, only you can speak for you. But I'm saying in the light of purpose, that we being in the very light of the purpose that God has for our lives, for his glory, and for our fulfillment may not be understood. There may be those who misunderstand why you are where you are. Why would his brethren not understand why he was where he was? Well, he was raised in a palace. We would say today he was raised on the other side of the tracks. We might even say he was raised with a silver spoon in his mouth. How can he possibly understand what I'm going through? How can he possibly understand where I'm coming from? He, now, his brethren were in slavery. He was in the palace. How could they possibly come to an understanding that maybe Moses does understand what we're going through? I mean, of course, he's seen it. He sees it every day. He sees us in slavery. He sees us in hardship. He sees us going through difficult times, tests and trials and situations. Surely he understands. Surely he knows. Yes, he did. That's why he was trying to deliver his brethren. The problem was his brethren didn't believe that he was who he said he was. <laughs> <laughs> Moses' name means drawn out. It means drawn out of the water. At a deeper level, it means deliverer. They didn't understand his purpose. They didn't understand why he was where he was and why he was doing what he was doing. And I want to encourage you tonight to say that there may be times, there may be times while you are in your purpose, while you are doing the do, while you are doing the thing, that there will be those who do not understand your purpose. Now, how did Moses, how did he react to all of this? 
when when it was told his business was told you know moses killed this egyptian and buried him in the sand well you know sand sand will shift over a period of time eventually the wind now i've been to egypt and i know what happens in the nighttime the wind is blowing and so it's shifting the sand around right so wherever this egyptian was buried eventually the sand was going to shift enough in order for whatever Moses had done to be revealed and when it was revealed he split <laughs> he ran you know <laughs> he headed for the hills so to speak and so what are we going to do though what can we learn from Moses? What are we going to do when we are misunderstood? Now I'm not saying that we'll go to the degree that Moses went to God forbid that we go to the degree that Moses went to. Amen. Uh, but things do happen. And so just on a blanket level, when we are challenged with our purpose, when we're challenged with people that don't understand what it is that we have been designed to do, just like that stripper, that stripper was designed to do exactly what it was doing once it was applied to the purpose for what it was meant for it went to work it went straight to work when moses had an opportunity to to help somebody to deliver somebody he went straight to work so what are we going to do because we're going to be challenged in our purpose that's just the world that we live in. Not everybody is going to uh, raise a flag and put your name in neon lights. Not everybody is going to high five you and give you a pat on the back. And not everybody that, you know, even when you think others would seek you out, you think they would call you, you think they would, you know, congratulate you and throw you a party and all of this, that, that might not happen. So what happens if it doesn't happen? Then we have to take a stand, right? We have to take a stand and we have to say no matter what, no matter who, no matter why, my purpose still stands and my purpose will be accomplished. Eventually, Moses, though he ran away, he was sent back to the very place that he ran away from and his purpose was fulfilled. Amen. You know the story. You've seen the movie, The Ten Commandments. You've read Exodus. <laughs> Amen. And so eventually his purpose was fulfilled. So number one, what are some takeaways here? Number one, be timely about your purpose. Moses got ahead of God. Did God use it eventually? Yes, he did. But Moses got ahead of God. Amen. Number two, Moses ran from the situation instead of staying and dealing with the situation. So he ran away. I mean, he, he got ahead of God. He ran away. And the third thing is he couldn't get away from his purpose. He still got sent right back to the very place where God had intended for him to be in the first place. So we can take those three things. I said I was going to read out of the Message Bible. Let's see what the Message Bible has to say. Let's see. The Living Bible. I'm sorry. I meant the Living Bible. It says this. It says, one day as he was nearing his 40th birthday. Now, you know 40 is very significant when it comes to the Bible. He was nearing his 40th birthday. It came into his mind to visit his brothers, the people of Israel, which he did not know were his brethren at uh, long before that. He learned that they were his brethren. During this visit, he saw an Egyptian mistreating a man of Israel. So Moses killed the Egyptian. Moses supposed his brothers would realize that God had sent him to help them. But they didn't. Let's read this out of the NIV. It's not too far different from the King James. It says, when Moses was 40 years old, he decided, decided to visit his fellow uh, Israelites. 
He saw one of them being mistreated by an Egyptian, so he went to his defense and avenged him by killing the Egyptian. Let me put a disclaimer in here. I am not advocating any type of behavior such as this. I'm just saying. Moses thought that his own people would realize that God was using him to rescue them, but they did not. That tells us again, there will be times, there may be times, most often there are times in our lives when we are beginning to walk out in purpose, we're beginning to do what God has put in our heart like Nehemiah, like we talked about um, two or three weeks ago, and like Elizabeth who was waiting for this um, child that was promised to her and Zechariah to come to pass, like Mary who was waiting um for the fulfillment of the promise that she would bring forth the word of God. All of these were in waiting times and waiting places. And when we're in a waiting time and a waiting place, that's when we're most vulnerable to step out ahead of God. So that's the first thing we have to make sure that we do is that when we are stepping, we are stepping not ahead of God, but with God, right? So I'm hoping and I'm praying that this little ditty today, this little stripper content was helpful to you, helpful to you to encourage you that you have a divine appointment, you have a divine anointing, you have a purpose, why God birthed you into the earth, amen, it wasn't an accident, it wasn't just an incident, it wasn't a coincidence, you are here for a reason, and so let us learn, first of all, what is the reason, and second of all, how do we go about properly to execute the very thing that we were designed to do, just like that stripper product designed and it worked perfectly even as it was designed. Amen. So I pray that something was said to encourage your heart, your hope, your faith, your trust and confidence in God and in God alone. So the question is, can God use a stripper? He most certainly can and God is willing to use you to have a blessed rest of the day. Actually, my name is Danette Hutchinson with A Woman's Place here in Clarksville, Tennessee. May God richly bless you until we meet again. Amen. <music>